Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2 Long War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken and this is the guide to Grenadiers. As always, the shameless uh, self-plug. If you enjoy the content, feel free to subscribe to the channel or leave a comment down below. We are continuing with our class guides. Today we're going to take a look at the Grenadier, a class in XCOM uh, 2 Long War of the Chosen that is focusing almost exclusively on the utilization of its grenade thrower that you can see. It is uh, one of the spin-offs of the class Grenadier. Uh, basically, they took away the heavy gun and only focused him on the um, explosive part. Uh, as always, the three uh, different columns that we're going to take a look at uh, will be those three here to go um, through uh, the abilities one uh, by one. I'll run you through my preferred setup uh, with it, which is kind of a hybrid setup, I would uh, say, and I'll give you the uh, reasoning why I'm skilling it the way uh, that I'm skilling it. As always, the uh, information and the uh, plug in, uh, into um, oh, by the way, the XCOM abilities and the pistol abilities, these here are additional abilities for um, that uh, from the um, uh, from the tactical uh, center and the pistol abilities are extra abilities for him being an officer on top. So they are not covered in uh, this guide. Not relevant for uh, for the class itself. The Grenadier excels in um, removing cover and providing support and utility to the team. That's how you, in my perspective, should think about him. You can play him also as a um, soldier with a gun that just happens to have additional grenade, uh, grenades, but then you're losing out on a lot of um, options here. The two main paths of uh, him are uh, one, the boomer pass, which I think they weren't aware that that's becoming more and more a um, uh, naughty word, uh, and the support path, uh, boomer pass focusing on explosive grenades, support uh, path focusing on supportive grenades, and in the middle, a lot of skills that are either helping you generally or focus on your gun more particularly. Um, how I would um, probably uh, classify the Grandier compared to the Assault is they, the tracks that they have chosen are not synergizing as well with, uh, with themselves as uh, they would with the Assault. So that's why you are seeing a bit all over the place uh, sk uh, skills here in the first uh, place. But let's go into them in detail and let me um, give you the rationale of why I skilled it the way I skilled it. Number one. Lance Corporal rank, um, uh, you, you generally start as a squaddy with the grenade launch ability, and now we're moving to Lance Corporal. You either can um, uh, get Zephyr, which means um, that the um, grenades that you're using will be better in exploding objects, which uh, in Long War is a great, a very, very important trait, so I would definitely rate it A tier. Uh, it's a good ability if you want to remove cover and focus on that. Um, I would recommend skilling this if you have trouble with um, the way that uh, the uh, cover removal generally works. Word of advice though, in the very beginning of the game, uh, you will still see that normal grenades, even with Zapper, do not do a lot against cover. You will see marginal improvement, but it's not an earth-shattering um, amount of uh, improvement. Uh, so Zapper becomes better as you uh, when you have plasma grenades, but in itself is not is is going in the right direction, but not in the level of magnitude that it needs to be. Needle grenades uh, will uh, allow you to not uh, destroy uh, loot when you're uh, killing enemies. Nice to have. Kind of C tier, uh, loot is good, but it's not worth really taking that skill. And then there's rapid deployment, which in my perspective is an S tier ability. It allows you to be activated. It then has a cooldown of, I think, four rounds. And um, after it's activated for the remainder of, uh, or for the next grenade that is considered a support grenade, so basically anything other than an uh, explosive grenade um, or fire grenade um, uh, or arc um uh, or EMP grenade um, or acid grenade. So basically uh, any form of smoke grenade, flashbang, uh, uh, flashbang grenade and the like would uh, be considered to be a free action. 
And if you play XCOM, you know just uh, for a longer period of time, you know just how valuable actions are. It's all about action economy. It trumps everything else. Having the option to dish out a grenade and then still take your entire turn, i.e. move, shoot, or at later uh, stages even uh, lock two more grenades, is absolutely fantastic. So I would highly, highly encourage you to take a look at it, which is also the reason why he has that ability. Secondly, Corporal rank heavy ordinance allows you um, uh, in the uh, grenade uh, slot to get an additional uh, damaging uh, grenade if you put a damaging grenade in here. On the contrary, uh, um, protector allows you to gain an additional um, non um, violent grenade or support grenade in the same slot. So those here are the decisions. Do you want an extra explosive grenade or do you want an extra um, support grenade? In the middle, you can uh, take additional um, firepower with your gun. Like I said, if you want to play the character just uh, as a normal uh, frontline soldier with a bit of grenade support, then this would be the route to go. I would probably always go for heavy, heavy ordnance here. Uh, I can't see a world... Um, where you can uh, create a complete uh, support-based uh, character. The problem with support-based characters is there is an upper limit to their uh, usefulness. Um, even if you do have 10 flashbang grenades, uh, if the uh, enemies won't die, they still get a chance to hit you, uh, which is why I am personally of the opinion that uh, grenadiers and technicians should be used to remove cover. That's their job, and they should be really, really good at it. Uh, next uh, uh, tier is uh, boosted cores. Explosive grenades deal uh, additional damage. Since there's damage fall off in um, long war, which means that at the edges uh, the grenades will deal uh, less damage. Uh, that's not so much um, a thing here and not that relevant. Um, on the other hand, formidable. I talked about this in uh, the other guides. It's an absolute fantastic ability. 50% less damage from explosive attacks. Two bonus hit points will just increase your survivability. Flat out, uh, super uh, good ability or flashbang grenades uh, that can now disorientate uh, robotic uh, units and reduce their resistance to hacking, which is a neat concept. I like it if you are having problems with hacking them in the first place, so you can use that and uh, red screen rounds um, to basically reduce their hack resistance and then take them over. It's good. Uh, you can go up into kind of that supportive route the problem that I do see with both boosted cores and blue screen bombs is it's very situational, whilst formidable is always existent. There, it's just factually um, a very strong ability uh, because you can always use defense. Next up, Staff Sergeant uh, Heat Warheads. Probably the S tier ability here is grenades that pierce two points of armor and shred an additional point of armor. You will very soon, um, in June, July, uh, the first spike, and September, October, the second one, run into heavily armored units. And it's uh, not very unlikely that you will uh, find yourself fighting against units that have four, five, six, seven points of armor. And that really is a problem uh, if you uh, have if you're falling behind the research curve because your weapons will deal almost no damage to said enemies. Uh, the heat warheads are a way of uh, without any technology involvement uh, circumvent that you can essentially uh, shred the enemies even faster, which is absolutely fantastic. Tandem warheads, uh, mm, uh, grenades, and rockets do full damage um, to the uh, maximum area so that gets uh, gets rid of uh, the damage fall off which is fine um, if you're going that route i would uh, suggest you are also increasing your boosted cores as well as heavy ordnance that's kind of the route if you really want to deal damage with the grenades I'm not saying that's not possible it's just um, not my preferred style uh, the uh, dealing damage to enemies can be done by everyone. Shredding, on the other hand, cannot be done by everyone, and that's their niche, and that's why they are incredibly important against those enemies. Um, then smoke adds 10 additional defense. Uh, again, if you are having hundreds of uh, smoke and flashbang grenades uh, with you, might as well want to make that even more useful. Very, very uh, good ability if you are having a supportive grenadier. I would probably say not as useful um, if you have a mixed build. Next tier, uh, bigger, bo uh, uh, bigger booms. 
which is grenades and rockets can inflict uh, critical damage, uh, so plus uh, three uh, uh, damage on them. Uh, that is something which, uh, again, is uh, pretty helpful if you want to combine it with tandem warheads and heavy ordnance to just deal damage. I personally didn't like it so much. Chainshot, on the other hand, um, in um, War Long War of the Chosen has only an aim penalty of 10 and not uh, 15 anymore. So it's very likely that you're going to hit uh, twice and you can deal a lot of damage. Uh, sting grenades on the other hand ha um, allow your flashbangs to have the 50% chance to stun the en uh, enemies uh, which isn't bad for crowd controlling purposes so if you're already in the support track you might want to go down that route. So why would I take chain shot uh, over the other two? So first of all uh, biggest booms are only really useful if you're going for uh, damage to begin with. Um, sting grenades are okay, um, but they require you to always have a flashbang with you. Not wrong to have that uh, on uh, the engineer and I'm uh, on the grenadier, and I'm often having one. Uh, but it means that that's all the ability does increases that one grenade. While chain shot, uh, specifically if you position yourself right, can add a lot of um, damage to your character class and uh, the way that I'm playing uh, it, uh, the character class is really removing all of the cover as fast as possible and then whenever the character class uh, is not doing that, using him as a damage dealer uh, with a focus on the gun. Uh, so the only reason why I haven't used center mass here is because primary um, use from my perspective is remove cover and then whenever possible secondary use is dealing damage with a gun. Chain shot um, has also no cooldown so you can uh, you reuse it over and over and over. Super good ability. Uh, gunnery sergeant, volatile mix, uh, area of effect uh, plus one. Super good together with uh, tandem warheads, biggest booms, volatile mix, and boosted cores. So you can see where this is going. It's really dealing more and more and more damage. Uh, Bombardier, on the other hand, allows you to launch even further. I would say that's rather a C tier ability, not seeing that much use. Uh, Salvo, on the other hand, clearly S tier ability. You can uh, launch a grenade and uh, your turn doesn't end. Uh, so that's incredibly strong. I would even consider that a must have on uh, on this rank always, uh, irregardless what, uh, what um, route you're taking. It's that strong. And finally, the Master Sergeant tier, which Comet Engineer, allows you to significantly increase the damage to covered objects. That's the important part here. Uh, together with Sapper, um, it uh, uh, combines the greatest explosive power. And if you're just following the uh, the route here, Sapper into boosted cores, into tandem warheads, um, uh, so uh, no damage fall off into bigger uh, booms, and then volatile uh, mix for even larger area, and then combat engineering, you will you will get a lot of cover removal. The reality that I ran into, however, is even if you only take combat engineer and have enough grenades, that's normally good enough. Um, seldomly, I've uh, been in a situation where I wanted to just uh, obliterate the entirety of um, of uh, the an, a house or just get rid of an entire wall. Uh, often it's just a very few particular spaces of cover that you want to remove and Combat Engineer does exactly that. Uh, it's always a question of uh, opportunity costs. The way that I'm playing the Engineer with Combat Engineer and Salvo allows your Engineer in uh, dire situations to use rapid deployment, get a free action, then always uh, remove cover if needed with Salvo and then even do two shots on top of it. Let that sink in for a second. That means in one round you can uh, drop a smoke grenade to protect everyone in your team. Then on top of it you can remove cover, dealing damage and removing cover of the enemy and then you can even use chain shot um, on top of it. Uh, mind you, 
the explosion of your uh, cover removal uh, would probably completely shred the enemy on top because you have heat warheads. So that's a lot of agency that the character gets through this build. Um, there is, of course, still the full kit, one charge of grenade um, per utility slot. So that's essentially for the other two slots. It's an extra charge of the grenades. It's good. I'm not uh, debating it. The problem is that you can't uh, take combat engineer and that at the same time. So you have a lot of grenades, but you still cannot really remove cover. It's probably the go-to um, uh, selection if you go into a supportive build, because you will just get more and more grenades out of it. And finally, Ghost Grenade, which is an absolutely fantastic ability, allowing um, you uh, to target allies uh, to re-enter concealment. That is great. I love it. Um, I personally don't use concealment that often, but you can have a nice mechanical co uh, collaboration between this and the Reaper, this and the Shinobi, and so on and so forth. So it's definitely a good ability. Um, alternative builds, um, as uh, they go, I spoke about kind of the frontline soldier um, with just a bit of grenade support. If your character has a high amount of aim, good movement, and uh, good hit points, then uh, chances are you might want to try out uh, the build uh, to just rely on the weapon. In that particular case I would go for rapid deployment because it does not cost you anything and you'll just have one or two support grenades in there. I would go for center mass, I would go for formidable, I would then probably uh, either go for dense smoke or tandem warheads depending if you find yourself um, using that uh, extra grenade slot a little bit more. I would definitely go for chain shot, um, I would definitely go for salvo. Um, a salvo if you're using explosive uh, uh, grenades because it allows you to still have a lot of agency there and then um, I would probably in this particular case skill ghost grenade because you're not uh, focused on cover removal and that extra ghost grenade is a nice uh, support um, grenade which you can even use with rapid deployment other than that center mass and chain shot are the um, and formidable are the core um, skills of your build if you're focusing on that. Hope this um, provided some um, insight for you and uh, I would like to hear your stories about blowing up the battlefield with a grenadier. Take care and see you soon. Bye bye.